good morning let's do us a restoration this morning I've already started on this I forgot to turn the camera on like I normally do but uh this is a Imperial made in the USA Providence Rhode Island probably from the 60s there it is right there I don't know what they call this knife, but they would probably call it maybe a hunter or something like that. Uh, the fellow that sent me this actually found it laying somewhere years and years and years ago. Put his initials in there, DE. So I'm going to leave that in there. And the issue is he wants a new handle and sheath for it. Now I went to take the handle off and had a really hard time getting it off because it was so rusted underneath. Very, very, I've already cleaned the rust off of it. These pins are the old style cutlery pins and they are rusted together, would not come out. Now at first glance I thought this was bone handles but it turns out they are uh, some kind of molded plastic which was very common back in the late 60s and 70s I think I actually had one of these myself with a bone type handle it looked like bone but I'm sure it was plastic now this side came off this side broke I'm gonna tack that back together with some super glue and send it back to him just for a keepsake uh, finger guard is off of it And I'm going to replace the handles with this here. This is front leg bone from a cow elk. Now I've had this bone for a long time. It's pretty long. It's about that long. I cut it in half. This is the best suit for this knife, I think. Now when you take a bone like this and split it in half, it has a void in the middle of it. It's hollow. So I cleaned it off and I put uh, epoxied in a, this is a oak dowel pin, which I just give it a lot of strength and something flat to line up on. Of course this will go back on. See so that'll actually go on that side, like that. You want the handle a little bit bigger, and I left it long so we can trim it off and get a little bit bigger out of it, a bit longer, and it will be a little bit bigger around because this is an absolute good candidate for a good using knife. Now, the next step I did all this yesterday, I shouldn't turn the camera on, but I didn't. That epoxy is dry and set. Now the next step, I'm going to take it over and I'm going to go ahead and buff out this blade and get it cleaned up like I want it. I'm not going to take all the patina off. I'm just going to polish it, get it good and smooth. And in the end, we'll put another edge on it. It's pretty sharp. It's very sharp like it is. But there's a couple of uh, gouge marks in there. I don't know how that happened, but uh, no big deal. We can sharpen those right out of there. And I'll have to, yeah, I'll have to start over with that. <laughs> now, I'll also clean this up real good and gun blew it. It was chromed before. It had chrome on it. A little bit still on there. I'll finish sanding that out. Uh, uh, prevent rust and we'll put some rust preventer on this before we glue the handles on now next step going to the buffer while well, I can still get to everything real good buff it off and clean it off real good and I'll be back with the next step on this one in a few minutes alrighty next step on the Imperial knife restoration Got the new handle on the epoxy has dried 
I install the pins and normally on pins I will pin them down I've shown that before uh, to make sure they hold really well now this being bone even though it's filled solid and it's very strong it can be brittle if I go to beating on these pins from the outside so I put these in with epoxy uh, they're not going anywhere the handles not going anywhere and being as it's longer than the tang I added a little piece of green G, uh, uh, G10 spacer and a piece of red to make it even out I think that's going to look pretty cool now the next step I'm going to put it in the vise here and the chuck board knife vise and start hand sanding once I get all the hand sanding done, we're going to take it over here and get the Dremel tool out and I'm going to jig this bone. It'll be jig bone and put the final colors on there. It's going to look really nice. I know it looks a little rough right now, but uh, I'm not going to bore you with the sanding because it'll take at least an hour to get everything down like I want it and then we'll do the jigging. Alright, we got it sanded off nice and smooth. Now we're going to start the jigging process. I'm going to do a little bit on this side and show you how I do this. Pretty straightforward. Got the Dremel tool. This is a little round, uh, round cutting bit in there. I'm going to keep the speed fairly slow. And there's no certain pattern to this. You just put little marks in there where you want. Alright, let's go right here. hard to see on the camera but we'll be able to see them better here in a few minutes there's one there let's go down here and don't have to be real deep just a little bit Maybe make that one curve up a little bit. And maybe we'll make this one a little longer. Use your imagination. Alrighty, that's the way you do that. Now we'll go in and color these dark here in just a little bit. And we'll turn it over and do this side the same way. Now this side got a little chip out of the bone there, so we'll incorporate that in so you'll never see that. I'll be back in a minute when it's time to put the color on. Alright, we'll make sure y'all can see this. Alright, we got our little jiggy marks in there. Now this is see that red oak red oak stain 
take a toothpick come in here and mark all my little holes my little jig marks get more toothpicks up to much of it up This will wind up being pretty dark. There we go. Like that. We'll let it dry for just a minute, then we'll wipe it down. So, a little mark there. Then we'll come back with a lighter color and do the rest of it. And I smeared it a little bit right there. That's all right. Okay, and I'll put a couple on the top up here. to see them as we get older our eyesight starts to not be quite so good <laughs> like this I know this is taking a while sometimes I get behind and people want to know What's it taking you so long for? Well, this kind of thing takes time, that's why. Not that this person has said that. It has been said before. This would also add a little bit of grip to that handle. I am not a fan of super, super slick knife handles unless it's going to sit in the cabinet and be looked at. These knives that I make are to be used. Take a rag. Wipe off some of that excess. And that didn't darken as much as I wanted it to. So I'll just repeat the process and let it sit a little bit longer. I might get a darker stain. Let's do that. Anyway, that's the way you do it, and I'll show you what it looks like here in just a little bit. All right, I was not satisfied with the color I put on there. Still a little bit there. I sanded it most off, and I also reprofiled this handle just a little bit, make it look a little bit more like I want it to. So I'm going to go back in here and clean out my clean out my jig line. And put a little uh, darker, different color on there. Won't bore you with all that again. No. We'll see it and take two. All right, let's try this again. I just dropped my whole toothpick in there. <laughs> let's put a 
it a little darker. A little darker color in our jig lines here. Oh yeah, that's going to be much better. Okay, I'm going to let that soak in and dry just a little bit. Same kind of stain, uh, men wax. This is a dark walnut color. And then we'll come back with the lighter. See, I got a little too much in there that time. But it'll wipe off. Just like that. And I'll just continue on on both sides. Then we'll see it again here in just a little bit. Alright, got our jigging stain. Looks much better than it did before. Better color. Now we're going to take some. This is golden oak. Stain, which is lighter just a little bit in there and one thing we want to seal this bone up good but uh, one more step in the final and we'll handle that really good Just the little slightest bit of the white bone we're going to leave in there. Just about like that. Make sure we get a good coat on this end here because this is a little coarse. So this will uh, seal it up good. that now we'll let this sit on there for a little while soak in and we'll wipe it off and let it dry a little bit more and then we'll put the final uh, the final coat on there to really seal it up good and I'll show you what that's going to be here in a few minutes all right what y'all think so far I like it. Alright, let's get back to it. Our stain is dried. Took all day, but it dried. Now we're going to put some clear lacquer on there. I use this lacquer pretty much exclusively on all my handles unless it's stabilized wood and sometimes even on there. It dries very quickly so you can second coat it and third coat it. I like three coats and it dries very 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 hard and it shines really nice too and you can polish it once you get it all done and it dries good before you try to polish this though it needs to dry like 24 hours and then don't use any compound or anything like that just a, a clean looking wheel and we'll do that to this one tomorrow I don't know, tomorrow Sunday. I think I'm going to take off tomorrow. Sort of. Got lots of stuff to do in the yard. That type of thing like everybody else does. Okay, there we go. First coat. 
Now, within about five minutes, it'll be dry enough to uh, recoat. The can says two hours. But, um, I'll, about five minutes to do it. There we go. Almost done. Except for the sheath and the well, polish sharpen in. You got to build a sheath for it. All right, let's do our finishing up video on our Imperial knife restoration. There's the sheath. All done up really nice. Right there we go. Now I polished the blade, but I did not take all the patina out. I didn't take the initials out. Because they've been there a long time. And I think they need to stay there. Right there it is. Now the handle, a little bit bigger, longer, compared to the old one. Right there. And this little crook right here in the bone, perfect place for your finger to rest. Now reground the edge and a sharp boy let me tell you what it is sharp so there you go if you like these uh restore videos on knives if you have one you would like done contact me by email it is in the description of this video and this one is ready to be sent back home and thank you all for watching and I'll be back with another restoration of some kind, I'm sure, pretty soon.